Okay, we're here today uh, to, at the Saban Theater to hear Marion Williamson and Alanis Morissette are going to make an announcement. Wow, check this theater out. It's pretty freaking wild. There's a lot of people here. And we'll see what's going to be said. They say it's in a real an announcement, so this is very exciting. Young people at Kent State, it's as though those who thought that the answers were internal went in one direction, and those who thought that the transformation of our society needed to continue to be an externalized uh, form of activism, both social and political, sort of went another direction. And what's happening now, I think, is that those who are making an internal quest have come to realize that if we're to really be serious about this love stuff, it can't just stop at my life being okay. We have to now take it to the next step. I think if anything, if any impulse of this campaign, any impulse of this moment in history is true and real, it's that it's time for grown-ups to unite. And by interested in the inner life and the spiritual realities and the, the idea that we are part of a moral universe and there are deeper issues and questions than just me getting mine. What is my, what is my moral responsibility to my brother? What is my moral responsibility to the earth on which I live? What is my moral responsibility to other generations? And particularly, I think that we are coming to understand, at least I have, I feel it very strongly in my life and I know many people I know feel it as well. You know, I'm a student of history. I've always loved to read about history, but I particularly read it through biographies because when I understand what happens in the life of an individual going through a particular historical moment, then I understand it better. I've always been fascinated by the founding of this country, by the founders, and I'm particularly uh, fascinated as a student of spiritual and mystical studies, I'm fascinated by the great seal of the United States, because the great seal of the United States, designed by Jefferson and Adams and Franklin, has a picture of the great, the, the great pyramid at Giza. Can you imagine someone like Dick Cheney making as a great seal of the United States? <laughs> of the Great Seal at Giza, but it's more than that. It's that the Great Seal, the Great Pyramid at Giza, on our dollar bill, ladies and gentlemen, on the Great Seal of the United States of America, on the top of the Great Pyramid at Giza, which in reality has lost its capstone. Archaeologists don't know. Egyptologists don't know. It's one of the great mysteries of history and archaeological lore. Where is the capstone of the Great Pyramid at Giza? They've never found it. Some archaeologists feel that it's somewhere in that causeway, for those of you who have been there, between the, the Sphinx and the Great Pyramid. Somewhere it must be buried. And in the great metaphysical traditions, it says that the wisdom of humanity is buried beneath the, sa the sands of Egypt. And what the, the tradition, the stories, the lore claim, is that during a time when the Egyptian civilization was in decline, it is said that Egyptian priests went up, they climbed up to the top of the pyramid and they removed the capstone to be buried until humanity had achieved enough in terms of its own evolutionary achievement to be able to return the capstone. That capstone had upon it the eye of Horus, which means the all-seeing eye. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our founders in designing the Great Seal of the United States designed the Great Pyramid of Giza with the capstone back on. And they said underneath that in Latin, Novus Ordo Seclorum, New Order of the Ages. You know, when this country was founded, it was not just a great moment in political history. It was a great moment in philosophical history. It could never have occurred had it not been an outgrowth of millions of people's hearts who were absolutely, absolutely enthralled with the Enlightenment thinking of that time. The Enlightenment thinking of that time that said power would not just be based in the hands of a king. It would not just be based in the hands of a queen. It would not just be based in the hands of an aristocracy, their cronies. Power, real power, should be vested in the hands of anyone. 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 This was radical 200 years ago, and it is radical today. Now, obviously, many of them were slave owners. They themselves did not rise above, most of them, not all of them, did not rise above their own historical circumstances enough to say that that should also be women and it should also be people of color and that there should not be slaves and so forth. 
that the great process, the great narrative of American history has been a journey. It has been a philosophical journey as well as a political journey. journey. And the narrative has been, generation after generation, those who felt that we should take this extraordinary principle of equality, this extraordinary principle that everyone was created equal by God. Everyone was created equal, and the, the, regardless of who your parents were, regardless of how much money you have, regardless what your education or class, that you yourself had what it takes. That if you were educated and you had a free press so that you could know what was going on, then the power of this country should be vested in your hands. Now, there have been those in every generation who said, yeah, let's make this real. Let's make it not just white men who are landowners. Let's make it, the, let's abolish slavery. Let's give the rights of, uh, to vote to women. Let's make this more and more true and manifest this great principle of equality, even unto this day in the right for gay marriage. So our generation is no different than any other generation. I think we are seeking to expand the democratic family.